Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Second Quest. On the last episode we took care of level 6 and it's time to move on. Um, I apologize for kind of a break in between videos here. I kind of took a little bit of time off just to get my bearings so, um, you know, straight for the next couple of uh, games that I want to do. But anyways, um, I just want to take the secret passage here. We've only got two more episodes of the second quest to deal with. Um, I'm not sure how many episodes the uh, Adventure of Link is going to be, by the way. I've already recorded it, as in recorded the gameplay, and I've got to splice it up into videos. I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to do that. I'd like to do it by dungeon, but I'm actually breaking it up a little bit. So, yeah, it'll be a little bit of a surprise there. Also wanted to thank everyone for subscribing. It looks like my channel's still growing, so it looks like I may hit 400 subscribers soon, which is amazing. I didn't think I would hit this milestone so soon. And uh, yeah, at any rate, I need to go down here and burn this bush just to get a little bit of something extra. What do you think I need? Yes, I just need the meat. That's okay. You actually need it for this next dungeon. And you can guess where we're headed. We're headed towards level 3. We have level 3 and level 7 to deal with. The last episode, just, you know, spoiler alert, it's going to deal with level 9. And level 9, I'm going to do a little bit of, um, side questing, if you know what I mean. Just exploring different, um, directions you can go on level 9 that, you know, most people probably haven't done just because it's a little dangerous to do that. But that's okay. Level 3 is rather short, and um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, well first of all we got to deal with these ropes here. If I'm not mistaken, level 3 is uh, one of those levels in the second quest where it kind of, um, it taunts you. It kind of makes you think that uh, the levels aren't going to be that difficult, because they give you kind of an easy one. The level 2 is probably more difficult than level 3, but anyways, if you look at the map here, you'll notice that there's an L on the right hand side. And then two extra rooms. And they're not connected. And so the map isn't contiguous. And it makes you think that there's got to be some sort of a secret passage around here somewhere. And uh, I like that. And the way they designed this, well, you'll see in a moment. But first we've got to take care of the Hungry Gariah. Gotta get rid of them with the meat. Can't be meat with the meat. I don't know what kind of meat it is. It doesn't exactly look like a turkey leg or chicken leg to me, because it's much too symmetrical for that. But I think I mentioned that in the first quest. Didn't know what it was. Also, I may take a few uh, breaks of a few days in the near future, just because there's a few games I want to play through before I let's play. A few independent games, if you know what I mean. Now that we've gone the way, all the way up there to get the magical boomerang, uh, we're going to go down here and get the bombs out because, well, I'm not sure if this is really the um, boss enemy of the game. No, sorry, boss enemy of the dungeon because it's so far away from the Triforce. But I guess it could be. And I guess I screwed up a little bit with the Dodongos, but... I think at this point I may have been getting a little tired before I took a little break with the gameplay. Gotta get rid of those wall masters. Don't hit the uh, don't get the stopwatch, of course, because um, you know the wall master is going to be stuck in the wall, and you wouldn't want that. You'll have to go back out and go back in again and get rid of them. No, it sucks. And the Master Sword really helps in this dungeon. Well, it helps overall, but this dungeon it just makes it a walk in the park. You know. At any rate, that wraps up the third dungeon, or the third level. The next level we need to head to is going to be level 7. 
And it won't take us long to get there. Level 7 is located around here. I first made a mistake here. Um, because you have to... Um, well, you can get it from the other side. But it's one of these bushes up here. And you'll see right there. Um, I suppose you could kind of get it from the other side, maybe. But level 7 um, is where we're going to get the red candle. So you have to go back off and on screen again and again until you get it right. Unless you get it right the first time. Which I did not, but that's okay. Also, by the way, I'm going to take a minor cut here because I am going to get a little bit of money for this next dungeon. Hmm, <laughs> I just thought I'd throw fire at him. Get out the magic wand here. kind of avoided that room. Now this room I kind of make a minor mistake in because you don't have to get rid of all the enemies. And I was just thinking maybe I could just open up the uh, shutter here. Or at least get rid of some of the enemies. But um, we have these bubbles that we have to deal with and that sucks. And I think at this point I kind of realized I didn't have to open up that shutter so I just said to hell with it let's move along. You know. Well eventually. This is also another kind of difficult room because of the uh, columns that we have to deal with here. And of course we have the um, bubbles here that take our sword away, but at least they're the temporary bubbles. They're not the permanent bubbles. The red and blue. The, well, you know what I mean. They're the mixed bubbles, you know. got a column to move here, and that gives us a secret passage. Also level 7, the dungeon design is pretty similar to level 8, except for the fact that it uh, swirls in the opposite direction. It kind of looks like a cinnamon roll. I like that they did that. They gave the uh, dungeons a little bit of a neat design, but they're not exactly linear either with all the secret passages, especially level 8. Um, I think level 8's one of the more difficult levels. Because of all the uh, passages you have to deal with. It's interesting to me that level 8 and the second quest is of a different type of difficulty as level 8 in the first quest. It's a little bit more difficult in the second quest, but um, the first quest, level 8, is so difficult because of the dark nuts and the fireballs you have to deal with. And in this one, level 8, um, it's more difficult because of all the weird passages and one-way passages you have to deal with. But anyway, so we got the red candle there, which is nice. Although we really don't need it anymore because we've got the, um... We really don't need it that much, really, because... Well, we've got the magic wand, and we have the blue candle anyway. So we can light up a room with the magic wand and the magic book, so... That's pretty nice. And also the, um... What was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um... I don't think we're going to need to burn any more bushes as far as the red candle goes. But what I was going to say is a lot of speedrun runs they'll kind of miss the red candle because you really don't need it. But in this game I just figured I might as well get it. Just so you know where it is, I guess. I don't know what I did there. I think I just screwed up, but whatever. It's still a no-death run for the entire second quest, so I'm happy. Right that at that point I kind of just said, to hell with it, let's just move on. I just think it's kinda of funny. Mm 
you'll notice uh, a few seconds ago the uh, fireballs in the left, lower left corner were actually aiming towards where I was at the doors, so they weren't really showing up that much. That's not too bad of a room. Just take your time and keep an eye on the uh, fireballs more than the dark nuts and you should be okay. Again, another room with a lot of dark nuts and a goma. This level uh, has the white background too, like level 9, and I think that's interesting. I like how they gave the levels different colors, just to make them a little different. So even if you didn't look up to level 7, you would immediately know you're in another dungeon, you know, or a particular dungeon, because you could associate it by color, or at least for me. And yet we have another secret passage here. Now, I believe the red candle is the only item of interest in level 7, but that's okay. Now we have more dark nuts. Avoid them. Get out of here. Get out of here. Good, good, good. Now we have more of these rooms. These are these kind of weird, um, I guess not really a turnstile room, but a room that um, makes you go in a particular direction. And of course, I am not giving up a heart container. No siree. No thank you. I've got to get the hell out of here. Looks like a dead end, doesn't it? Well, it's not. I just have to find a way to get out of here. Heart, heart, heart. And you'll notice you can actually walk pretty, uh, almost on top of the, some of the enemies without getting hit. But you have to practice it to kind of figure out where that is. Ooh, fairy. <laughs> Look at that. Almost, almost full in life, but oh well. It would have helped if I had the red uh, ring as well, but it's alright. I'm not sure why it was originally a red ring and not like a red tunic, but oh well. I guess a, a ring was easier to do as far as the sprite goes. And I like how right before the um, Dungeon Master we have this nasty, nasty room here with a bunch of dark nuts. And you can probably guess what our enemy is going to be for level 7. Is it an Aquamantis? No, it's not going to be an Aquamantis. It's going to be our friend, the Gleok. And it's a four-headed Gleok at that. That's what makes level 7 a little difficult with Gleok, but once you have the Master Sword and a lot of hearts, just go after him. At any rate, this is going to wrap up this episode, so thank you so much for watching, subscribing, all that fun stuff, and have a good day. Bye-bye. <laughs>